Hello, people. Welcome back. So last time we uh, we installed DOSBox and Phasm onto DOSBox, and there's a few things I wanted to talk about. Some people had mentioned that they want to use a different version of DOSBox. That should be perfectly fine. You can even use MS DOS or Free DOS. Um, all this should work identically on everything uh, that that runs DOS. Uh, another thing that uh, some people mentioned is they might want to use a different assembler, and that's perfectly fine as well. Uh, there's a bunch of different assemblers out there, um, even for DOS. So there's Masm, Tasm. Um, I think Nasm has a uh, a version for DOS, and I think there's even one called A86, and there's likely dozens more. Um, all of those are fine, and however, I wouldn't recommend using a different assembler unless you're already familiar with assembly programming because there are certain uh, features that are specific to different assemblers. And so I can't guarantee that the code you'll see here will work well with a different assembler. So uh, so just wanted to give some uh, in information on that or recommendations. Uh, there's a couple other things we, I wanted to do before we get started, and uh, I covered some of these things in detail on a very, very old uh, video, probably over eight years ago, uh, but I want to cover at least uh, 30 seconds of some of the basics. So this is a Wikibooks uh, page, and uh, this goes over some x86 assembly and architecture, and the thing I wanted to point out here is the registers. So DOSBox... Uh, can emulate up to a 32-bit machine, um, depending on the version of DOSBox, usually up to a early Pentium processor, maybe a, an 8586 or something like that, that um, maybe 8686, somewhere around there. Uh, we'll probably stick to around the 486, the 8486 architecture. Um, all of those, though, are 32-bit. And so I just want to go over a, a little bit about the registers. So registers will be using Essentially, every single uh, um, every single assembly language program is going to use registers, and so we'll be using the 32-bit registers on down. Um, so the x86 uh, uh, is uh, the registers that are available to us in x86 is uh, EAX, EBX, ECX, ESP, EBP, EDI, ESI, and EDX. You don't have to know right now what each of those stand for. They got those names uh, historically because they assigned different registers different purposes, and we'll probably get into that as we do programming, and we won't just front load it all. Um, the, the, the one thing that you should know, though, is that these uh, registers um, can be broken up into pieces. So if we want to, we can access the bottom 16 bits of a 32-bit register by saying AX. And indeed, before the 386, so the A286 and and previous generations of x86 processors uh, would have these uh, registers: AX, BX, CX, SP, BP, DI, SI, and DX. Those are all 16 bits. And on a 32-bit architecture, you those aren't separate registers; they're just half of an EAX register. So they're the bottom bits of the EAX register. And so this kind of graphically shows what those look like. Now, the AX register itself, you can actually access the high four bits and the low four bits of that AX uh, of all these registers. And so um, they have their own names. Uh, they ha either have an H after them for the high bits or an L for the low bits. And so we'll actually be using that uh, quite a bit, or well, a little bit for the first programs that we write. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone understood that those things were there. And you can look this up. There's probably lots of different pages, web pages, that describe the registers that exist and also talk about what they're for. Uh, and so that, I think, is pretty good. So the next thing that I want to cover is some other little setup before we start programming. And... Um, Oh, to show you that there's different DOS boxes that can be used, I just um, I just installed uh, DOS box staging, which I thought was kind of interesting and wanted to check it out. So this is this is that I've given it the same kind of uh, settings that we did in the previous video. So the one thing that you'll probably want to do is uh, when you're in your C drive, uh, uh, obviously you should probably already have your apps directory. And it should have, um, oh, let's see, dir, and actually let me clear this out so I can show you a little bit better. So dir apps, 
And so I've got uh, I've got a bunch of different programs in here, but you should probably have uh, FASM and the X, uh, HXRT. Um, and then uh, and then I've actually created a uh, a couple of interesting batch files. So these bat files are actually batch files, and they're like you can in Linux they would be the equivalent of say shell files or or yeah shell scripts. And so what I want to do is, is show you some of those things. Uh, you can actually create shortcuts for yourself. So if, you, if there's certain programs uh, or commands that you're running a lot, you can actually uh, cr uh, create those and put those in this apps directory because if you remember, we set our path. If I say echo path, oh, I guess that's not how it works, does it? Um, echo, or actually, can I just say path? There we go, path. So uh, notice I set the path to have a bunch of these things. And one of those things is C uh, colon slash apps. And that means that whenever we run a command, it will actually look, uh, look in that apps directory. And so I want to show you, we'll say phasmd. Uh, I'm going to say apps, uh, apps.bat. So what is apps.bat? Well, it's it's very it's a very short uh, batch file. So this at ampersand uh, echo or actually at sign echo off just makes says hey don't print out any of this stuff. Um, and then uh, I have a cd command so change directory to c apps. So what this allows me to do is wherever I am in the in the file system I can actually go to the apps directory. And I have the same kind of thing set up for um, dev. So I have this, uh, so whenever I type dev, um, it will actually take me to my code directory. And I can show that off right now. So if I type dev, hit enter, it'll take me to my code directory, which is great. So that means I can be anywhere on my system and go to the code directory. So that is actually a very useful thing to do. So if you want to have uh, have shortcuts to go to certain things or a shortcut to open a certain file or do things, you can create these little batch scripts, just put them in apps, and you'll be able to type those thing, those commands in, and it'll work as if you had a, a special program. So I wanted to show you that because that's pretty interesting. So the other thing I wanted to show you is uh, you I uh, before we start, you'll want to create... A, uh, so you should have this apps directory, but you should also create a code directory. You don't need games or TC. Those are just other things because I like to play some games in DOS. But uh, you'll want to create a code directory. And the way that you do that is you say make dir, and then you can say code. Now, the thing that you need to know about DOS or the DOS uh, command prompt is that it's not case sensitive. So if I create a directory... Like say I created a directory called code2, uh, you'll notice that code2 is in all caps. And so that basically that's how the file names and the, uh, the directory names work. They will always be in caps and it doesn't really matter. In fact, if I want to type and I want to change directory to code2, you can notice I, I can type this and it'll change to code2 and it didn't care about the capitalization. So, uh, so that's nice. Um, now, if we wanted to remove a directory, we can use rm, I, and I believe uh, uh, remove dir or rim dir can work too. So if we do code 2, um, that should remove that directory. So now code 2 doesn't exist anymore. Uh, keep in mind that if you want to remove a directory, it has to be empty in order for it to be moved. And with that, I will show one more interesting um, script. So I will go to apps and take a look at our batch files. Note that there is another uh, file called delder.bat. And that's a little uh, batch file that I created uh, just uh, not too long ago. And I will show you that now, phasmd uh, delder.bat. And this one is a slightly more complicated program. In fact, I could simplify it a little bit. But I created this to kind of show off how you can create your own special commands. So we have this at sign echo off. And of course, the at sign means that don't even print echo off. If this at sign was not there, then it would actually say, when you run this script, it would say echo off. And then it wouldn't print anything else. So in order to turn that off uh, to silence itself, we do that. Um, 
Uh, the other thing is, is you can pass arguments to uh, batch scripts, right? And those arguments will have a percent sign and a number. So percent sign one will be the first argument to the batch script. And so you can, you can assign variables uh, to, to those arguments, right? Or the arguments to variables. So I'm, uh, this is a, showing an example. If I say set and then create some variable when I'm calling it arg one, and then I say equals percent sign one, that means I'm going to assign the first uh, argument or the, the first argument of the script to a variable called arg, arg1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, oh, so del dir, what it does is it deletes a directory and it, it, it actually deletes all of the files inside that directory. So you can't have subdirectories and I could probably actually change this or write a little more complicated script. Um, to to do uh, to do this recursively, but this will allow you to uh, do a simple directory delete. So uh, what we do, what we want to do is we want to go inside that directory, and that's what this does. So this cd arg1 will uh, take us in, change the directory to the directory we want to delete. Now we're inside there, and now we can delete all of those files. So delete star dot star says, okay, look for every file that has a name and then any, any name and any extension, and then just delete those. Then we go back outside of that directory, and then we remove the directory, right? So rd is also, uh, there's, there's rmdir, and there's also rd, which does the same thing. And so I guess we should show this off. Um, we're not, uh, not going to save the, the changes. Uh, so let's say, let's go to dev. And we have, I have a couple, you know, pre-done programs here, but let's make a directory and we'll call it temp. So now we have our temp directory, right? So let's go into our temp directory and let's use phasmd to create um, some brand new file. And it's like, hello, um, this is my file. It's just a text file. All right, so we'll exit, we'll save, and we'll save it to, um, and notice we're in C code temp, and so we'll save this as temp uh, temp.txt, all right? So there we go. So now if we look, we can see we've got temp.txt here. Um, we can use the copy um, command to copy temp.txt to, um, to hello.txt. And so now we've got a copy, and we can open that up, phasmd hello.txt, and then we can say this um, is another line added to the text. Okay, we'll save this. So now we've got a couple of different files in here. We can go outside of this directory, and so notice we have our temp directory. So what if I want to delete temp? Well, if I try to use it with, if I try to use rdir, and say temp, it'll say unable to remove. And that's because, uh, as I said earlier, it can only remove an empty directory. So if we want to remove a directory that's not empty, uh, well, I've got this new command called del dir, which I showed you that script file. So if I do del dir temp, it will actually delete that directory. So that's just a demonstration of how it works. So this kind of thing is very useful. I create these kinds of uh, special scripts all the time. So, it, uh, so note, I'm going to say apps, and that will take me to the apps directory. That's equivalent to saying cd um, c apps, right? So instead of having to type that every single time, I can just type apps, and there I am. So I just wanted to show that because that's uh, very useful, and you may want to create your own scripts uh, that do all kinds of interesting things, and that is very possible to do in... Um, in uh, DOS. So uh, that's that's about it. Um, next time we'll actually go over some um, some DOS assembly language programs, and because there's some very interesting things uh, uh, to work into that, and so we'll we'll actually start kind of uh, creating programs. So thanks, and until next time.